These are carbon fiber filaments, and most of them aren't what you think. Actual carbon fiber parts use long continuous fibers embedded in a cured resin, where the fibers provide strength and stiffness, and the resin just locks them in place against each other so that they behave like a single rigid part. But if you want to have carbon fiber in filament, there are lots of compromises that are being made. Instead of about 50% fiber content in laminated carbon, these are at best about 15% fiber, and often only about 3 or 4%. And the fiber that's being added is also being ground really fine in order to easily get consistent round filament and to keep your printer's nozzle from clogging up. That reduces how useful that fiber actually is, because now you're relying on the plastic they're embedded in, not only for keeping the fibers from moving around, but also for gluing all the short fiber ends together. And when I tested these for strength in the Filoene series, many fiber-filled filaments actually ended up performing worse than their unfilled base material. So I thought, how hard could it actually be to create a filament that doesn't make that compromise? Well, I'm about to find out. So let's grab this bag of raw polycarbonate blend and head out to the garage. Now, the core challenge is this. I wanted to go to the opposite end of the spectrum of the carbon fiber dust filaments and go for like a one millimeter long fiber additive. I talked to the guys at 3Devo and they gave me some great input for this. They basically were like, no, that's not gonna work. You have to try it for like a hundred micron fiber size, so one tenth the size. So my plan sort of changed. I thought I could build a device that would chop a single fiber into one millimeter bits. But with 100 micron, that's simply not going to work. You also can't just buy fibers that are the right size, um, unless you buy like a, a, a one ton big bag of it. So I'm gonna have to try and create some of my own. So obviously I went out and bought the finest blender I could find as seen on TV. I mean, that, that means it's gotta be good. I spent 20 bucks on this. And if that doesn't work, I can just use a coffee grinder, which should be well suited for grinding really hard carbon fiber. Uh, this one is pretty beat up already, and once I push some carbon fiber parts through it, it's never gonna see coffee again. And to actually get the ground particles into a proper size range, I bought these high quality uh, lab sieves. One is 80 mesh and the other is 200 mesh, which means anything that gets caught between them is between 75 and 100 micron in size. So a bit larger than the recommended fiber size, but uh, I do want to go for strength. Shout out to Prusa for actually sending over just literally straight up a bag of their PC blend uh, resin that they use to make their PC blend filaments. So this is basically a printing optimized version of polycarbonate that prints a little easier, but still has many of the mechanical benefits of using a polycarbonate. And first things first, this needs to go into the dryer. And while we're waiting for that to finish, let me thank today's sponsor, JLCPCB. So for the last couple of years, I've been ordering all the bare PCBs and SMD assemblies I needed for projects on the channel and off the channel from JLCPCB, and they've been really great. Ordering is super easy, their prices are incredibly affordable, even if you just need a handful of boards, and the quality they produce is absolutely perfect. One thing I didn't know you could so easily order now too is full color silkscreen. You upload any image and JLCPCB will use their UV printing process for a high detail silkscreen print for both sides of your PCB. And until January 20th, JLCPCB are offering a $10 discount for the full color silkscreen option, which you can try out at the link below. And they forgot to include the cover for the lid. Fantastic. Yeah, that seems appropriate. Now, before I chuck some actual carbon fiber in here, I wanna do a test run with some hemp fiber. This might make for a good filament reinforcement material too, if it can chop it down. And some wood fibers. This is some dense Siberian larch wood, and you can already see it has some nice, long, strong fibers. And this is when I realized the project was gonna be a bit of a challenge. Before I had started, I was worrying about whether the blender would be able to chop the fibers, but that actually wasn't a problem at all. As the fibers got smaller and smaller, they also started tangling together more and more, so instead of a fine dust, I was essentially getting a loose piece of felt. And on the inside of that felt, there really wasn't any chopping going on, so these fibers stayed way too long to use. 
So let's try the wood. Now wood itself also is a composite material where you have cellulose fibers being held together by the lignin polymer. Okay, so that's working, but I think I need to get more in there. And because the lignin is keeping everything in place and not allowing the fibers to weave themselves into that felt, this is actually working pretty well. The blender isn't smelling all too happy about this, but while most of the material is too coarse and going straight back in, we are starting to collect some that is within our target size range. Oh yeah, look at that. That's something. I also quickly tried the coffee grinder, and first of all, that was super exhausting to do, but also, even on the finest setting, it was still not grinding fine enough. So I'm gonna let the coffee grinder live, and I'm not gonna torture it with carbon fiber. And after about three hours of blending and sieving and blending and sieving, all these coarse particles are just not gonna work for filament making. But the medium-sized particles that made it through the coarse mesh but not the fine mesh are exactly what we want, and they are actually looking pretty nice. And then maybe with the dust we can also try making filament. This is all stuff that is smaller than 75 microns and really is more like a flower than a fiber material. And with that done, it's time for the main event. And of course, for chopping up the carbon fiber and then for extruding the filament too, I'm suiting up. What I wanted to try first was this unidirectional carbon fiber. This is just the fiber, no resin in it yet. And of course it's doing the exact same thing as the hemp fiber. This stuff is like emo dryer lint at this point. I still tried sieving it, but it's just not giving me anything to work with. I then moved on to this scrap piece of unidirectional carbon fiber composite. This is the same base fiber material, just with resin in it, so it turns into one rigid hard piece. And I quickly learned that I do need to chop these down a bit more, because these parts are now so rigid, they would just destroy my blender otherwise. That's nothing that more tape can fix, right? And eventually, the blender did manage to break down these carbon fiber bits into particles that are within our size range. There are still some bits in there that are thin enough, but too long, but I can just sieve those out in a second pass. Just like with the wood, this took a couple of hours to get done, but I think at this point I've got just enough material to get the smallest possible batch of filament made, so let's get to that. I learned from the last time that I was making filament, and this time I had the polycarbonate blend resin in the dryer for about 12 hours, so this stuff should be as dry as it gets. I started by tuning in the extrusion parameters for just the pure base material, and I learned that I would need to go way lower in extrusion temperature than what the preset was on the 3 Evo filament maker, because this is not pure polycarbonate, it is a mix of different materials that is easier to process. And eventually, I had managed to extrude about 50 grams of the base material with a very consistent diameter. Now, I know it sounds like I'm stalling for time at this point, but I was just really uncertain about how well extruding these fiber filaments would work. Grinding down the fibers was so much effort, and yet I only have so little of each material, so I needed to make a count. So again, I started with the wood fiber. None of these powders were particularly dense, so they really didn't want to mix with the polycarbonate resin. I did my best and eventually just dumped it in. But before that, I had already run the extruder with just plain polycarbonate, let the hopper almost run empty, so that when I dump in the mix, it would already be at a steady state and could start extruding consistent filament right away. And once the hopper was running out of the mixed material, I just top it up with some plain polycarbonate, flush out the barrel with that, and then start on the next mix batch. Now, once we got to the carbon fiber mix with the particles in the right size range and about 15% by weight, you could clearly see that the extrude wasn't going well. Thankfully though, I still have the shredder around, so I can just let this batch finish and basically use that as a pre-mixing stage. All I have to do then is to roughly chop up the filament and the shredder is going to turn it back into granulates. And with those pre-mixed granulates, the filament extruder was actually much happier. So at this point, I've already printed some sample parts from the standard polycarbonate blend and the CF polycarbonate blend, which is, yeah, coming loose pretty well here. Because the grinding and sieving process with the carbon fiber and wood fiber particles was such a slow process overall, this is all the filament that I have, and it should be just about enough to print 
one of these. Now, before I put this filament into the printer, here's a little trick that I learned from Dust Filaments production line. Basically, I've made a die that is just a little bit smaller than what the printer can take, and I run the filament through it. The idea is that if there is ever a blob in the filament, we catch it right here, instead of clogging the printer in the middle of a print. The trick with setting the filament extruder to 1.5 instead of 1.75 millimeters worked really well for the plain polycarbonate. But as soon as I tried printing with the materials that had fiber added into them, the extruder was still getting stuck, even though there was no blob in sight. What I found out was that this was because the Excel's extruder actually bottoms out at about a millimeter of filament diameter, and the filaments that I made actually all dipped below that at some point or another. Because I had loaded the printer with a 0.8 millimeter E3D nozzle X, clogging wasn't an issue there, and I could get around to the extruder feed issues by just pushing the filament in by hand and keeping a light pressure on it the entire print. These parts only take about 12 minutes to print, so I can just do that by hand. Overall, these filaments all printed pretty much like the standard PC blend. I noticed with the Prusa carbon fiber that I used for comparison that it actually became easier to print because the fiber stabilized the part when printing, and it ends up warping less. The finished part is also super rigid. The datasheet claims about a 50 to 100% improvement over pure PC blend, but it feels like a lot more. With my own filament creations, I can't compete with that. The wood dust print actually is noticeably so mm, softer, as is the carbon dust print. The part with about 15% of the properly sized carbon fiber particles mixed in feels about the same as the part with nothing at all added in. And I think any benefit that the carbon was adding is being eaten up by the less consistent filament diameter, so the part ends up with under-extruded bits here and there. If you're wondering why the part with the sieved wood fibers is missing, well, that's because, unfortunately, none of that filament was usable, and that's on me. I did fully dry the polymer, but not the chopped wood that I added in, so it ended up adding in too much moisture and steaming the filament into a foam. Because a foam is more squishy and harder to cool down, the puller wheels in the extruder ended up flattening the soft and still warm filament into a tapeworm shape, and that simply isn't going to work in any of my printers. But I think I was on the right track with my carbon fiber experience. A ball mill would still be the better choice for essentially smashing the carbon fiber bits into individual fibers, and then of course a filament extruder that's actually made for mixing and compounding would have helped too. Typically, when solid material like fibers or even colorant is added to polymers, it's first run through a twin screw extruder that only has the job of mixing, shearing, and kneading your plastic into a consistent compound first, the extruded material from that is then chopped into pellets again, and only then run through an extruder that now only has to worry about creating a consistently sized filament. I'm surprised how well the 3DVO extruder did with mixing everything together, considering that it's absolutely not made for this, and the mix that it dumped in did look like a hot mess. If anything, I've now got a new appreciation for commercial carbon fiber filaments. There are a lot of unknowns that need to be just right to produce usable filaments, but when it clicks, it's actually making easier to print filament that is more mechanically useful. Plus, these are typically made with recycled carbon fiber, which is hard to use for anything else. I mean, if we can save 15% of the virgin plastic in our filament by replacing it with recycled waste material and get better filament out of it, that's a win-win. With that, thanks for watching. Happy New Year, keep on making, and I'll see you in the next one.